Greetings and welcome to Hexed Encountered. I'm Joe, and today we'll be taking a look at some war game news, specifically crowdfunding news, some games that are coming out of pre-orders, P500s, etc., or are going to be released soon, as well as some new releases. So let's get started with some crowdfunding. Over on Kickstarter, there are a couple of projects that have caught my eye. First, we have Crisis 1914 from Worthington Publishing and designer Maurice Suckling. This one has a week left to run. It ends on July 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern. So it has long since crushed its funding goal, and I'm backing it myself as I'm really looking forward to this game. The game itself is described as a game of international brinksmanship, or brinkmanship. <laughs> if you back down too soon, you lose, and if you back down too late, you lose. So it's kind of a balancing act, essentially. So um, it follows the train of events that began in June of 1914 with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. And it ended up triggering the First World War just a month later. The players take on the roles of statesmen from five great powers, Germany, Austria, Hungary, uh, Russia, France, and Great Britain. The goal is to accrue prestige by applying diplomatic pressure without triggering the Great War. The game does feature a solitaire engine, and obviously it can be played by up to five players, and it's designed so that it can be completed in a couple hours. So this is a card-driven game, as you can see right here. And while it's not a traditional Hex Encounter style war game that I typically, you know, highlight here on the channel, the historical flavor in this one is really high and the topic is a fascinating one, at least to me. And I'm sure to some of you as well, the components include a mounted game board, uh, 120 deluxe player cards, various, uh, well, five player boards, one for each of the five great powers, various markers and so on. Uh, the requisite rule book, this playbook here with historical details. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Uh, I follow uh, Maurice Suckling on Twitter, and he, you know, as as this was running up to the bef even before kick the Kickstarter started, he would post things about what he was reading and you know the research that he's been doing to to you know help create this game. So. I know based on his track record and based on the track record of Worthington Publishing itself that the components will be great and that the historical flavor and the design are going to be really well done as well. So um, when you know a designer and you know a publisher, you can kind of you know, know what you're going to likely be receiving when you, when you back a game like this. So the cost of the game is $65, which you know is not terrible. Um, and our estimated delivery time is in February of 2024. So here's a close-up of the board. These would be some of the, um, the player cards, etc. So you can see that, you know, this is a card-driven game. You know, there's some videos in here as well. And all kinds of uh, information here on, uh, on the game. So this is one of the games that I am really looking forward to playing. Again, that's Crisis 1914. You have until July 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time to back it. As I said, I already did, and I am looking forward to, uh, to getting my hands on this one. Okay, so here's another game that is uh, very interesting to me, at least, and I'm sure to many of you as well. This is uh, Field Commander Lee. This is Danvers and Games. This one obviously is in the Field Commander series. The most famous one probably or successful one would be Field Commander Napoleon. I know a lot of people enjoy that one. Um, I have never played it myself, but I have long been considering getting it. And if I didn't have such a monumental backlog, I probably would have already. So as you can see, this one does not have long to go. We're down under two days now. This one ends at uh, July 23rd at 3 p.m. Eastern. So that is Sunday, two days from uh, from now. And it has... Uh, more than more than well eclipsed its goal by over three times approaching four times with almost 500 backers so as you can see here it, it builds on the gameplay and design of field commander napoleon which is highly ranked on bgg and puts you in command of the army of northern virginia during the american civil war 
and the union forces are controlled by the AI. Now, if you're wondering about the union side, there is a field commander grant coming out at some point in the future, probably not too long in the future, I would guess, that will cover things, you know, cover the American Civil War from the union side. You get five campaigns, the Seven Days Battle, of course, that was around Richmond in 1862 when McClellan was in charge of the union forces. And this was right when Lee first took over the Army of Northern, Northern Virginia, replacing uh, Johnston. This is a look at what the map looks like. Uh, you also have Second Manassas, uh, which it could be called Bull Run. Also in 1862, and here's the map for that one. Antietam, of course, famous battle in Maryland. And then we have Chancellorsville, Gettysburg, of course. You could not uh, probably have a game called Field Commander Lee without having the Battle of Gettysburg in it. Um, and then, you know, some background on the war and the game and, um, you know, some history, basically, gameplay. So you do have difficulty levels. Um, you know, this kind of runs through the differences, I guess, from Napoleon, which is something that many people would be familiar with as they played that game and what the new game is, you know, how what the changes were that were made to the game. One of the interesting things that I found in this particular campaign as we scroll down, as you can see, each battle kind of has its own special rules and so on. Here are the components. You get five maps. I'm sure this is going to be a giant box, probably like a four inch box with all these boards and everything in it. Um, one thing with Dan Versing games, when you buy a game, you get a ton of stuff. There's always a lot of stuff in a Dan Versing games box. You also get these battle packs. So this is what I was talking about that I found interesting. So these are kind of an add-on where you can um, play the battles. Uh, yeah, the battle packs here. So you get specific battles that you can play from each campaign as kind of a separate thing that are meant to be played um, in a more quick, they're kind of quick play games. And these are add-ons for the campaign. So we have Seven Days, Second Manassas. They basically follow the same campaigns, Antietam, Chancellorsville, and Gettysburg. Um, but you get the, you know, you get a different, more kind of focused in view of just specific individual battles within there. So as you can see, um, well, there's some videos here from, uh, from Marco on, and the Player's Aid, et cetera, et cetera. Um, covering Field Commander Napoleon because this is in the same family. So, so the base price for the game is $90. Delivery is estimated for January of 24. You can also do this all in, which gets you not only the base game, but also gets all of the battle pack games. And that one costs 200. So here's something uh, a little different, uh, something I don't typically like promote or look at. And that's, that's more of a fault on my part than anything else. This is a um, a game called Fortitude, as you can see, it's a World War II themed solo trick writing, trick taking and write game. So it's a solitaire game. Um, it's trick taker, so that's a card game, obviously. Uh, it only costs three bucks. It is a print and play game. But I was looking at this uh, recently, and this one actually has 23 days to go. It's fairly new. Uh, has not met its goal yet, but it has a modest goal of 300, so it really just needs 100 backers, I guess, to make it. And I'm hoping it will. Um, because it looks really interesting. So what is Fortitude, right? It's a solo trick taking and write set during the 10th, 16 month period before D-Day. So basically what this is, is it's a game where you basically are trying to mislead the Germans and, uh, you know, leading up to, to the Normandy invasion, you want to kind of keep them guessing as to where the invasion is going to fall, when it's going to fall, et cetera, et cetera. If they figure out it's coming to Normandy, you lose, essentially. So um, basically you're running the deception campaign. Um, I'm sure people are familiar with, well, maybe I, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but I, I would guess many people that are watching this would be familiar with the deception campaign that the Allies undertook to prevent the Germans from knowing when and where the D-Day invasion was going to occur. Yeah, as it mentions here, will it be in Calais? Will it be in Norway? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to mislead Germany, essentially. So it's a new take on the roll and write or flip and write game. And while it isn't the first solo trick taker, the designer here, which is uh, Bent Pen LLC, 
They wanted it to play differently with the German bot. You aren't constantly flipping cards until the right one appears. And as the player, you aren't playing cards to get a high score. You play cards to any row except those that match your card suit. So that makes sense. Uh, Germany's first card of the game will set its regional focus. So there's some examples in here. They're animated. So you get a little bit of a gist of how the game will play. And as I said, this is to me, this is an interesting game that I'm probably going to pick up because A, it's, in fact, I think I already did pledge for this. <laughs> I'm logged out, so you can't really tell. But it's $3 for a print and play that looks interesting. And it's a topic that interests me. So I figured I'd include it in, in this look because, you know, I like supporting small pro small projects just as much as I would support, you know, GMT or, you know, one of the big, bigger war game companies, you know, all this stuff is, is interesting. And, you know, um, in many cases is kind of a labor of love. And I, I want to support that kind of creative effort, especially when it's something I'm interested in. Right. So it's kind of the best of both worlds here. So you can see, um, there's a lot of examples of how the game works and it's obviously a fairly, you know, straightforward you play cards you mark things down to track how you know what the progress is etc for the germans are you are you keeping them you know misled are they starting to figure out i mean it says right here if germany deduces normandy is the actual allied landing site you lose right so there are 16 rounds um it tells you it's you know three bucks Includes print at home PDF in both A4 and letter sizes. So, you know, for those of us in the U.S., you get the letter size. If you're in Europe and you need the A4 format, it has that has you covered there as well. And you can see the cards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And obviously, you could take it to you know like a UPS store here in the U.S. and you know get get it professionally printed and have, or Staples or whatever you know an office store get it printed up nice if that's what you want. So as I mentioned, this is a $3 pledge uh, delivery in September. So not even that long, not, not that long in the future. So to me, this was like a no brainer, three bucks um, for something that I'm pretty sure will be fun. It even has a tabletop simulator mod. So if you don't want to print it out and you're okay with playing it on tabletop simulator, assuming you have it, which I do, then you can, uh, you can just do it that way too. So. Definitely wanted to throw some attention towards this this particular Kickstarter project because I think it's it's an interesting one. And as I mentioned, it's really inexpensive. Okay, switching gears a little bit, we've jumped over to GameFound, and there's a few games here I wanted to talk about. So the first one here would be Battles of Napoleon Vol Volume 1, Alao, 1807. And this is from Sound of Drums, um, European developer, publisher. So, um, yeah, obviously this is a Napoleonics game. This is the first in the series, as you can tell by volume one of the Battles of Napoleon series from Sound of Drums, um, designed by Uwe Valentin. And it says the most famous battles in the age of Napoleon will be simulated on a tactical level. level. The bloody winter battle of Eilau 1807 will be the first volume in the series, right? So... Napoleon's been kind of hot lately. We've got the Napoleon movie with Joaquin Phoenix coming out, um, you know, and various Napoleon. There's always Napoleonic games coming out. Um, Herman Lutman has a new uh, Waterloo game through White Dog Games that, that looks like that'll be a lot of fun. And I mean, <laughs> I'm sure some people are like, do we really need another Waterloo game? But it's Herman Lutman's take on Waterloo, so that might be worth checking out, um, as I will be doing, by the way. So here we go. Battles of Napoleon, Volume 1. Epic game series simulates the most famous battles of Napoleon on a tactical scale, right? So what's in the box? You get your two 88 by 56 centimeter map boards, 1,120 15 millimeter counters. That's a lot of counters. You also get some gray cubes, black cubes, army charts, player aids, counter trays, dice, rule book. Um, I have backed this one already, and the goal has been met. We're at four four hundred eighty-two percent funded, and you can see counters. I really like the the animation here, where they flip the counters over, and you can see both sides, both the full you know full strength and obviously reduced sides. We have infantry, you have cavalry, you have artillery, of course. 
the command system, it's chit based. So um, chit based obviously is something that is a fairly popular mechanic. Everybody kind of knows how it works in general. And it works well because it gives you a little bit of that kind of fog, fog of war system in your game. Yeah, see, so during a game turn, the players are under constant pressure to decide which formation to activate. By efficient timing of activation, players are in the driver's seat to dictate the pace of battle. I mentioned Herman Lutman earlier. That's kind of the way his games operate, where you have to, you know, you, it's all about who you're activating and when you're activating them. It's the same kind of thing here, apparently. Um, there are special rules, uh, you know, that, that deal with things like snowstorms. Obviously, Eilau was fought in the winter. You have the Russian Cossacks, the French Guard, etc., etc. Some of the things you might expect from a Napoleonic game on this particular battle. Um, you have fatigue cubes, so you track fatigue with cubes. And as I mentioned, the animation in here is really cool about how it pulls things out and flips the counters and all that stuff. I think that's really well done. Um, you can download the rules. You can play it virtually on Vassal. As a work, this is a work in progress. Eventually, you'll be able to play it on Vassal. So the backing costs sixty nine euros. You the the estimated delivery is August. You can do a late pledge as well. Retailers early bird. I think I got in on the early bird. I'm not gonna lie. Save myself four euros. Um, yeah. So and then there are the the stretch goals of which it is currently at five of six unlocked this one's pretty close which will be alternative leader counters and pollards here we've already unlocked custom dice tally sticks order of battle charts customized dice that's that um funded thicker stock on the uh on the cards and player aids you have some add-ons you can get as well and those include counter trays as well. So this is, again, the Battles of Napoleon, Volume 1, Eilau 1807 from Sound of Drums and designer Uwe Valentin. You have four days left to back. Okay, so sticking with the Napoleonic theme, we have Bonaparte's Eastern Empire from Form Square Games. This one is 140% funded, has 10 days left, 59 backers so far. Uh, this one is from the UK and the pledge will be in pounds. So this is a one or two player game with a two hour play time for ages 14 and up. There's really only one level. You get the deluxe boxed version for 59 pounds. The regular price will be 72. You get a nice look at the various uh, components. This game is based in Napoleon's um, campaign in Egypt. That's why it's called the uh, Eastern Empire. So you get a lot of markers. Um, it's kind of area based. So key features here, the entire campaign from 1798 to 1801. You get all the various parties that were involved, multiple decisions every turn. And you can see you have like an event clock uh, because you don't know when the game will end. It kind of is a, is a tension engine as it mentions right here. Both players will stay engaged throughout each turn. You've got uh, some some really cool artwork. It mentions the artwork and the artwork. You can see some of it right here. It is pretty cool. Um, contemporary satirical cartoons by James Gilray, Isaac Cruikshank, and George Cruikshank. Uh, asymmetry and replayability because of the event clock, as was mentioned above. Why back now, etc. Some more of the artwork. Gameplay overview. So players will take the role of theater commanders controlling either the French invasion force or the allies made up of Mamluk, Ottoman, and British. So the French player will have to sail the fleet from France across the Mediterranean, avoiding the British fleet, stopping at Malta if possible, and then you'll disembark Napoleon's army in Egypt, and then the task will be to conquer Egypt and parts of Syria while escorting the savants to the Valley of the Kings. The other player, the allied player, will have to use all the forces available to them to basically stop the French from achieving their goals. So you do have a whole bunch. Let me scroll down a little bit. Here's a look at the map. So you can see we kind of stretch along the Mediterranean coast here up through Palestine and up towards Syria. Here we have Egypt and the Delta area. 
and the Valley of the Kings, etc., would be in Upper Egypt. So you get you get an idea, right? These are the components. You can see they all have names of French commanders on them. This would be the French side, right? French position and glory commander markers, plus the invasion fleet. You have some counters here for infantry, cavalry, and artillery, plus the savants, whether or not you visit in Malta, etc. Some dummy and real fleet markers uh, for fog of war purposes, I'm assuming. We have markers for the Mamluks, the Ottomans, the British and Albanians, Bedouins, momentum markers. So there's a lot of components in here. Four dice for each side and pawns for the combat table. It goes through the mechanism that, that was mentioned um, about how it ba it's based on the space's value on the map. Each space will have a value from one to four, and that determines how many dice you roll. Um, obviously, this is kind of a, a, a basic overview of the mechanics. The mechanics are interesting, and I would recommend watching the uh, the video on here to learn about how the event clock works, uh, how your combat table works. You can look at the, a draft of the rules. And some more stuff about the artists in some review videos. Homo Ludens, etc., etc. And I was wrong about that when I said before there's one level. There really isn't. That's the featured level. If you come down here, you could actually get it in magazine style, which is uh, less shipping and um, 20 pounds less. And uh, they do have a kind of an upgrade tier. And then down here, you got your shipping chart for the UK, EU, uh, various countries, including Australia, Canada, and the US, and the rest of the world. So you'll be able to know exactly what you're going to end up paying. This one looks interesting as well. You do have 10 days left. As I mentioned, it's not in, and it's also not an overly expensive game, obviously, and it looks like an interesting one. So that is actually the last of the uh, crowdfunding games I wanted to highlight this uh, this time around. I do want to switch over and talk about some other things. So here on the Tiny Battle Publishing website, you can see we've got a new pre-order for the game Conquering the Valley. This is the second game in the Shattered Union series, which is designed by Herman Lutman. And it's based on the system, uh, the Black Swan system that is used in A Most Fearful Sacrifice, the game on Gettysburg that just won several awards in the, uh, the Charles S. Roberts Awards, including War Game of the Year, as is mentioned right here. This one covers two battles from the, uh, the Valley Campaign of 1862. Um, Two, two battles commanded by uh, Stonewall Jackson on the Confederate side. The uh, Cross Keys and Port Republic battles, which were prior to the, uh, the fighting of the Seven Days. So if you are familiar with the Hill of Death, that was the first game in this series. Uh, this is the second, as I mentioned. So you get a couple maps, uh, two, uh, 17 by 22, 189 counters, 39 playing cards, a player's aid, card a rule book for the series a game module rule book five six-sided dice in various colors and a box to stuff it in and you um you get a little bit of uh mark walker uh comic relief down here with the playing time of two hours and 53 minutes it's uh, i believe three hours is the uh is the actual number but mark likes to throw a, a curveball in there for his stuff um this is a solo friendly system as uh, as are kind of Black Swan and uh, Blind Swords. They're all kind of um, similar with some changes, largely due to the scale of the of the game itself. Um, you know, the size of the units that you're that you're working with mostly. So that is uh, one of the games that is on pre-order that I wanted to look at. We'll jump over to the GMT Games website here. And if we scroll down, they just sent out an update with uh, some new P500 games. We have the Three Days of Gettysburg Deluxe Edition. This is a Great Battles of the American Civil War Volume 1, which um, Richard uh, Berg did. And this is a 
basically a uh, deluxe deluxified version. The first public, the first game, the first version, I should say, was published in '95. As I mentioned, this was a uh, Richard Berg design and the first game in the Great Battles of the American Civil War. Fairly complex, as many of his games are. This one is actually uh, Dick Whitaker has kind of taken over and revamped it, but the original designer, as mentioned here, was Richard H. Berg, um, the late great Richard Berg. And um, decent solitaire suitability, fairly complex. As I mentioned, some of his games are on the more complex side compared to some others. So that's one of their new ones. And another, also a Richard Berg game, is this Thunderbolt. They have two versions of this, the Deluxe Edition and the Regular Edition. So this is the third volume in Berg's Ancient World series. This one covers the Titanic Second Punic War between Rome and Carthage. And Mark Herman has teamed up with series developer Alan Ray to finish the game. So. If you had a, a game that was kind of unfinished that was started by Richard Berg, I don't know that you could find a better person to finish that game than Mark Herman, who worked with uh, Berg, collaborated with Berg on, on some stuff. The Great Battles of History immediately comes to mind that they, uh, they worked on together. So no, no better person um, to do that. And this one, the deluxe version, the difference between the deluxe and the other version is that this one includes volumes one and two of the ancient world in it so you get basically all three games in one box but if you already have the first two then you could opt for the uh less slightly less expensive i think the cost is a, yeah it's a 16 dollar difference as you can see by the orders to date um thunderbolt deluxe has 404 and the the base only has 29 uh, this game just hit the, the 500 mark, the Fields of Fire Volume 3, the Parachute Regiment, which covers British forces in World War II, the Falklands, and Afghanistan. So you get um, 40s, 80s, and the uh, 21st century there. And there was another new one that's not listed on here. Let's see if we scroll over. Red Storm Second Printing. This was also one of the new ones. So you can $54 by... Uh, Air Combat Connoisseur Aficionado Master Designer Lee Brimacombe Wood, um, Third World War, 1987 kind of thing. Um, this is one I really wish I already had, but I am I have already um, put in an order. I'm not logged in at the moment, but I have ordered one of these. This one is one that I am definitely interested in. So those are the games that are currently um, new to the P500 um, on GMT. They've had they had a few that are coming out of P500 as well. So these are these are currently going to be starting to ship this week. So you have the second CDG solo system, Liberty or Death, the uh, coin volume on the uh, American Revolution, designed by Harold Buchanan. Uh, the new North Africa 41 from the Simonich uh, 4X series, and a new levy and campaign, Plantagenet, which is War of the Roses. Those are being shipped this week or next week, uh, depending, I suppose, on when you ordered it. They also have this new thing with a replacement counter sheet they're going to do, which is relatively inexpensive. If you live in the U.S., it'll cost you $3, include shipping, uh, $8 outside the U.S., and it has updated counters for errata stuff from these games in this list right here. Okay, we'll hop over to the Revolution Games website. They are having their July sale currently, and they do have a couple of new games out right now. Grand Havoc, which is the eighth volume, I believe, in the, yes, number eight, in the uh, Blind Sword series. This one is designed by Jeff Grossman. This was obviously the system, or is the system, that was created by uh, Herman Lutman. And this one covers the Battle of Perryville in October of 1862. They also have Eagles in the Sky. And these two games both are still on their pre-order price. So you'll save 15 on the boxed version and basically 15 on the Ziploc version. $14.45, I guess, to be exact. Uh, Eagles in the Sky is a World War I air combat game. That seems to be a hot theme of late. We've had Aces of Valor and Western Front Ace come out fairly recently. 
eagles in the sky as well. This, the difference between the, the aforementioned two and this one is that this one is a two-player game. So it was a two-player card-based game on plane-to-plane -plane warfare during the last year and a half of the First World War. So most of these games are going to cover like that 1916 to 18 period. Because before that, the planes were very rudimentary. Some of them didn't actually have guns mounted. And they were all very fragile, even up through the end of the war. But um, this one's designed by Mike Lemmick. And again, you can get it for basically $20 less than the retail price if you buy it now while it is on sale. They do have a lot of games on sale. One, uh, This game's actually not on sale. I did a video, or actually several videos on this game. This is an excellent game, just to throw that out there. Stalingrad Advance to the Volga. I, I highly recommend this game. It's, it's excellent. All right. Uh, I think I have one more thing I want to show, and then we'll be done. Okay, so over on the Legion War Game site, you can see here that they just released A Glorious Chance. This is a War of 1812 game. It's a solitaire game by, by Gina Willis. Gina Willis, uh, if you're unfamiliar with her work, she worked with Jerry White on the Excellent Skies Above Britain game. And this game is is a look at um, basically the, as, it, as you might see here on the screen, it says the naval struggle for Lake Ontario during the War of 1812. And you can still get it at the CPO price of $60. I did put in a CPO for this. I have already paid. I also took advantage of this special offer where you get uh, $15 off any of the games on this list right here. Um, some of these are pretty, pretty good in my opinion. So you may want to take a look at that. So here is the aforementioned The Glorious Chance game that you can get for $24 off. And... Um, yeah, it's a solitaire operational war game that puts you in command of the U.S. or British Naval Squadron on Lake Ontario in 1813. You have four months to dominate the lake, et cetera, et cetera. So um, based on, um, you know, Skies Above Britain, I, I think this is probably going to be a pretty cool game, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to checking it out. So we do have some pictures here. Counter sheets, you can see the ships. And some markers, and here's our map. A nice tight look at Lake Ontario. And our box back. As you can see, it's a one player game, medium high complexity, and high solitaire suitability. So that is a glorious chance that is uh, just coming out of CPO. And I do, as I mentioned, Legion does have a sale where you can take $15 off a selection of some of their other games. So you may want to check that out. But that will do it. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching as always. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them up and I will uh, respond. But that will do it. Until next time, this has been Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. And as always, thanks for watching. And until next time, happy gaming.